and anger at 10.30. Now the world as we know it has ended, but it did so not with a bang. Two blokes used to sit in that corner. Roy Barker and George, what's his name? No. Yes, you do. Everybody knew them. They were always in that corner. Roy Barker. Big chap. Ball. Bad leg. He always sat there, and George always sat there. George was a little fella, moustache. His wife was a Baptist. Had a mini metro. <laughs> What about them? What was George's other name? I don't know. No, I only ever came here for the pub quiz league. I can't remember his name. I can see him, but I just can't remember his name. What does it matter? Oh, is it a cap on? You never saw him without a cap. We used to wonder if there was something wrong with his head. <laughs> George. You sure you don't remember his other name? Quite sure. There's no way of finding out now, either. I'll never know his name. <laughs> ah, well, this shows the importance of writing things down, keeping a written record. Mm. Do you know, scholars have always felt the need to write about their lives and the times they live in. It's like Peeps. No, it's not like Peeps. It's more like Wilkinson or Atkinson. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Peeps was the diarist. Now, had it not been for Peeps, we'd have known precious little about the Great Fire of London, 1666. Ah, yes, we historians owe a great debt of gratitude to the men who wrote things down at the time. We still remember the Venerable Bede. Who? Oh. <laughs> the Venerable Bede, another great chronicler. Was that his name? Venerable Bede. <laughs> yes. It's a funny name, isn't it? Venerable. I never knew anyone called Venerable. <laughs> you sure you don't mean Vernon? <laughs> Vernon Bede. No, Colin. Uh, Venerable is not a name. It, it's an epithet. It was added a century later. So what was his name? Bede. Bead what? Just bead. Don't be daft. Nobody's just called bead. <laughs> what was his dad called? Who? Bead. Bead's dad. I don't know. Didn't he write it down in his book? <laughs> no, Colin. I bet bead's not his real name. I bet it's like Sting. What? <laughs> Sting's not his real name, you know. It's just made up. Big-headed bastard. <laughs> His real name's Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> I've forgotten Sting's name now. Uh, the point I was trying to make, Colin, is that uh, by keeping a, a diary, one not only provides oneself with an aid memoir. Sumner. Gordon Sumner, that's it. It's just George now. One not only provides oneself with an aid memoir, one also provides future generations with essential information. I don't think future generations will be all that bothered about what George was called. <laughs> the eyewitness account by the informed observer is absolutely invaluable. Yes, that's, that's why I keep a diary. Do you? Yes. That's my uh, gift to the future. Do you know, in some strange way, I think it's one of the reasons I've been chosen and singled out somehow <laughs> to record these momentous times in my diary. What are you writing it? Huh. Thoughts, reflections, an analysis of events. Am I in it? 
You mentioned, in passing. <laughs> what did you put? Colin, my diary's not concerned with the trivia of your life. Not a bad idea, that. Doing a diary. I might have a go. Oh, Colin, I hardly think posterity will be interested in what happened to you. I mean, you seem to forget. I witnessed what could well have been the end of the world. I was here. In this very pub. I mean, sealed in that booth. I watched as everyone disappeared. Boof, dust, nothing. Ah, my account will be invaluable. Yes, just over 12 months ago, and I can see it all as clearly as if it was yesterday. Me too. You didn't see anything. You were sitting in six feet of chlorinated water. <laughs> Fancy missing the end of the world because you were on a sponsored dive for the Barrow Rugby League Club. They're all gone when I came up. £147.58p they owe me. <laughs> Barrow could have done with that money. Not well, now, they couldn't. I thought they'd all cleared off as a joke at first. At first? For ten days, you kept sticking your head around or shouting, All right, I know you're in there. Now come on out and pay up. <laughs> oh, you don't know what it was like. You, you don't know what happened. No, you don't know what happened. No, but I saw it. What did you see? I saw it all. Nothing. Well, I didn't see nothing either. <laughs> no, you didn't see anything. I saw nothing. There's a difference. <laughs> you're a dickhead, you. Do you know that? <laughs> You've no idea what happened either. You told me that the reason everyone had disappeared was because of the BBC. No, perhaps you did. You said it was a magic trick for the Paul Daniels Christmas special. I said that's what it was. I said that's what it was like. <laughs> well, all, all right, Colin. Maybe I, I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe I can't explain what I saw, but I, I have ideas, Colin. I have intuitive feelings. Oh, call it what you will. Fate, karma, God. But there is a a destiny that shapes our ends. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> there is a destiny, Colin, that shapes our ends. <laughs> well, if you're going to talk filth, I'm going to have another drink. Uh, hello? Is there anybody there, please? Hello? If you can hear me, please can you say hello, please? <laughs> now. <clears throat> hello? Me again. <laughs> Is there anyone there, please? Thank you. Brian said you've got to give the call sign. You say, this is near bridge, and then you identify yourself. Oh, right. This is near bridge. Hello? <laughs> I'm Graham Wilkins. This is my wife, Janet. <laughs> is there anyone there, please? Thank you. That's better, Graham. But you should speak up a bit. You mumble. No, I don't. What do you mean, I mumble? I don't mumble. You do, Graham. You're mumbling now. No, I'm not. That's not mumbling. That's not what I call mumbling. It's you. You don't listen properly. <laughs> Why are you getting at me? I'm not getting at you. I'm just pointing out that you mumble, that's all. Well, I don't mumble. You do. You might not think you do, but you do. Well, I don't think I mumble. <laughs> I don't know why you're getting so upset. I'm only pointing it out for your own good. You don't realise how irritating it is. And another thing you do is you wiggle your foot. What? You wiggle your foot. When you cross your legs, you wiggle your foot. I don't? You do. You see, you don't realise you do these things, but I'm always catching you out of the corner of my eye, wiggling. I know why you're getting at me. I told you I'm not getting at you. It's the usual, isn't it's it? It's not. Yes, it is. It's children. It's when are we going to have children? You're in one of your moods. I'm not. But Brian was saying only the other day that he thought we should start a family. What did you tell him? I told him the truth. I told him that we'd been trying, that we had been trying for quite some time. I didn't tell him that some of us had been trying harder than others. Is that supposed to mean? It's not supposed to mean anything. I pull my weight. <laughs> I know you do, Graham. I'm not saying that. It's just that we know I'm all right. The clinic have given me the thumbs up and 
We've done everything they've suggested, but still no luck, so I don't know what to think unless... Unless what? Unless it's you. Look, what else can I do? I'm doing everything you ask. You say Wednesday, there I am, ready and waiting. Try the end of the week. <laughs> end of the week it is. I'm beginning to feel like a performing seal. Not much fun for me either, Graham. I'm going out. I'm going to help them with the water. Well, don't tie yourself out. Why not? Oh, no. <laughs> How are you feeling today, Graham? Lips off? Yeah, fine, thanks. Good. Good. Only I was just thinking about that little problem you were telling me about the other day. You haven't told anyone, have you? No, no. And, and anyway, I, I haven't got a problem. No, no, quite. Just that I popped next door to Dr. Farley's house to see if he had any literature on it, you know, so I could bone up on the subject. Infertility and so on. Can we drop this, please? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Just that, uh... Tell me, have you ever thought of boxer shorts? <laughs> Mind your own business. What was all that about? Nothing. You know what you said yesterday about... Writing things down, diaries and that. Oh, yes. That's a good idea, isn't it? Oh, well, thank you, Colin. Yes, I, I think posterity could well regard my memoirs as essential reading. Who knows? It might become another doomsday book. No, I meant to thought I'd have a bash. Oh, really? Yeah. It's easy, isn't it? I did some last night. Do you want to hear it? Ah, uh, well... That's no, good stuff. You like it? Shall I just read you a bit? Well, if you... It's really interesting, honest. This is yesterday. After winning the match, me and the lads went to the town hall for a civic reception. <laughs> I have now scored more tries than anyone else in the history of rugby league. <laughs> the mayor shook my hand and offered me his wife for a night of passion. Heavens, no, heavens, no, 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 hang on. His daughter comes in in a moment. It really ops up then. This is absolute dribble. It's not. It's good. It gets really exciting, especially after tea, when I get picked to lead the Church of Australia. No, it's, it's a complete fantasy. It's all made up. Of course it is. The, a diary is supposed to be a factual account of the day's events. Don't be stupid. I didn't do anything yesterday. <laughs> yes, but the whole point about writing a diary is that it has to be true. You see, that's, that's its value. You can't make things up. Why not? Because you can't. And there's a point in writing a diary if it's all made up. There is. If posterity reads this, they'll think I'm bloody marvellous. <laughs> Look, when Pliny, the younger, describes the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, we know what happened. He was there. We know it's true. How do you know? What? How do you know it's true? <laughs> this Pliny bloke could have made his up. Of course he didn't. Who says? Well, that'd be stupid. Yeah, he could. He could have made it all up. In fact, I bet he did. But he wasn't even there. So, you're seriously suggesting that Pliny the Younger, one of the most respected authorities of the ancient world, made it all up? Yeah, could have done. <laughs> he wrote it down, doesn't mean it's true. I mean, if he said he played in the Rugby League Cup final, you'd believe him, would you? No, oh, <laughs> he, no, he didn't. No one called Pliny has ever played Rugby League. Because I know, because I got all the Rothmans yearbooks, and man's a lying bastard. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Worried about our bedroom. There's no ventilation in the chimney breast. <sighs> Should be, you know. It doesn't make sense, this. What you reading? Brian's diary. I nicked it. <laughs> I nicked it from his room. Will he be annoyed? Probably. I won't tell him. It's his gift to posterity, this. He says it's one of them doomsday books. It's total crap. <laughs> Listen to this. March the 5th. Reread King Lear today. 
I'm not sure that Shakespeare is right about one or two points, <laughs> e.g. nature versus nurture. <laughs> it would be nice to trash it out with him. <laughs> Had fish again for tea. <laughs> Look, my dad is much better than this. This is a story. March the 6th. All brave new world that has such people in it. <laughs> Attempted to discuss Plato's Republic and elitism with Colin. As usual, his attitude was anti-Diluvian. <laughs> Is that good or bad? <laughs> what? Anti-Diluvian. Don't know. I expect it's bad. Does he write about us, then, about our conversations? It's mostly about himself. He hasn't written down anything I've said, has he? I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> Listen to this. March the 29th. British summertime begins, and with it, I trust, the dawn of a new era. Clearly, I have been chosen to establish a new civilization. <laughs> I shall bear this burden with pride. <laughs> Fortitude and dignity. <laughs> My chillblains have flared up again. <laughs> oh, Lord of Tush. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? It's my diary, isn't it? Is it? No matter where it is. Where did you get it? Well, it was just lying around. It was not. It was in the top left hand drawer, my chest of drawers underneath my socks. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was just lying around there. <laughs> uh, could you? This is not for you. This is private. This is for the future. This is for mankind. I'm mankind. Shut up! <laughs> you betrayed me. <laughs> Only fools scoff at what they don't understand. The observations contained in this journal are far beyond your grasp. Oh, yes, I am betrayed. But I'm not mocked. Do you know, Colin, after all I've tried to teach you, I had hoped that you might have some dark comprehension of the promised land. But no. I must travel this road alone. Blimey, I've done it now. <laughs> Not like him to miss his tea. And he knew I was doing the beans. You don't think anything's happened to him, do you? No, he'll be all right. Oh, I see what it is. This little thingy here has got stuck on the what's it. So the, um, none of the, um, none of, it, none of it's getting through. It's... He was very proud of those runner beans, too. He kept saying to me, the beans are coming on, Colin. <laughs> I like repairing things. Do you know, I look forward to things going wrong just so I can repair them. I think you'd better go and look for him. What's the point? He could look after himself. Well, he might have had an accident. No, Brian doesn't have accidents. If he is an accident, it's not an accident. It's part of some great scheme. It's destiny trying to tell him something. Usually it's trying to tell him to be more careful next time, then he wouldn't have so many accidents. Well, I think if he's not back by tonight, we should organise a search party in the morning. I've done this kind of thing before. At the Cub Scout leader course. <laughs> what you do is you get a map and divide it into zones with a grid reference, and then everyone covers their own area. That sounds fun. <laughs> Actually, what they do in the guides and the scouts is that each patrol, the beavers, the peewits, the daffodils and so on, <laughs> have a different call to signal to each other. Now, that could be useful. Do you know what this is? <laughs> I'd prefer not to say. <laughs> it's the call of the beaver. That's the beaver patrol, see? Now, the peewits make a kind of whistling noise. 
I'm not quite sure what the daffodils do. <laughs> I think I'd better be going to the hill now. Oh, I shouldn't bother. We're going up for him in the morning. No, I ought to. We go every night. It's what we do. <laughs> I didn't mean any harm, Ted. It's not your fault, Colin. No, I know that, but you know what he's like. To be honest, Colin, I don't know how you put up with him. Not much choice, have I, Ted? Doesn't look like he's coming. I never thought he'd take it that badly. Well, actually, I suppose I did. See, Colin, he's not like you. He's not one of the lads. Too touchy. No sense of humour. What about that time you showed him how to set light to a fart? <laughs> he said it was disgusting. It made me laugh, Colin. <laughs> Say nothing, Ted. He's coming. <sighs> I'm sorry. Did you say something? I'm oh, sorry, Brian. It's just that I thought... I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Your behaviour was unforgivable. But no matter, I forgive you. I realise my journal is way above your head. Does it matter if some moron tries to ridicule me? No. <laughs> Prophet has no honour in his own country. He laughed at Galileo and Copernicus. I used to like cannon and ball. <laughs> they were worried about you. Really? No one even came to look for me. We were going to look tomorrow. <laughs> How do you know we didn't come to look for you? I was sitting next door watching the house. Well, at least you came here. Yeah, well, we come here every night. Of course we do. I thought maybe you wouldn't turn up tonight. Yes, well, um, duty, so on. Oh, glad you did. Anyway, Colin, I had a lot of time to think sitting there next door in Dr. Farley's surgery. You see, Colin, many, many great writers, artists, poets weren't appreciated in their own lifetime. No, genius is very rarely recognized in its day. Take Rousseau, Van Gogh, Cervantes. Stevenson. Who? George Stevenson. That's it. George Stevenson. <laughs> he used to drink with Roy Barker in the Waverley. I'm glad I've remembered his name. George Stevenson. I'm sure that's right. That George Stevenson invented the rocket. Did he? He got very quiet about that. George Stevenson was a great engineer. Stevenson's rocket. Oh, the man was a pioneer. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Yeah, well, that's amazing. <laughs> I thought he was just a little old man. He used to play dominoes with Roy Barker. <laughs> I used to buy him a pint now and again. Now I really have got something to put in my diary, haven't I? I used to drink with the man who invented the spaceship. <laughs> The single of the Not With A Bang theme is now available on Weekend Records.